Welcome to Psychosynology, the show where a licensed mental health professional analyzes and attempts to diagnose movie or TV show characters. A mental health diagnosis should only be applied by a qualified professional. This video may contain spoilers. Avengers Infinity War was released in 2018. The film was a major critical and commercial success. The film was directed by Anthony and Joe Russo, known as the Russo Brothers, who have directed a number of other Marvel films like Captain America The Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War. Prior to this, the Russo Brothers primarily directed TV shows with little exception. Infinity War tells the story of Thanos, the film's villain. The character development of Thanos is interesting because the audience is invited to understand Thanos' perspective, even if they disagree with it. Thanos is not a one-dimensional villain of the week who exists solely as fodder for the good guys to beat up. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of fighting in Infinity War, but there's much more to Thanos' character than a strong threat for the Avengers to deal with. Okay, so right off the bat, diagnosing Thanos is kind of dumb because Thanos is not a human being. The Great Titan. The DSM-5, or 5th edition, of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders is used by mental health professionals like me who work in the field to diagnose pathological human behavior. And since Thanos is not a human, the DSM was obviously not established for him. Although Thanos does state that he was referred to as a madman by his peers. They called me a madman. So apparently it's cool to refer to Thanos as a man, even though he's not. And so that's how I'm going to be referring to him in this video. If that offends you, I apologize. Also, I'm not going to be looking at Thanos from the comics or from Avengers Endgame. This video is simply focused on the version of Thanos shown in Infinity War, which I believe gives us a rich depiction of one interpretation of his character. Now, some may argue that Thanos in Endgame is the same Thanos from Infinity War, so I should use that material. But others will argue that Thanos' character was a little different in Endgame due to the circumstances he found himself in, and some even think that Thanos' character was a bit butchered in Endgame. I'm not going to take a perspective on this, I'm simply going to focus on Thanos presented in Infinity War, and perhaps in the future I could look at Endgame Thanos and maybe even combine the two. Maybe. But let's get on with it. Okay, so here are some observed Thanos behavior slash traits. Violent, goal-oriented, strategic, general flat or reduced affect, believes he is an agent of destiny, grandiosity, is willing to make extremely costly sacrifices, believes the ends justify the means, utilizes torture techniques, states that he doesn't want to cause pain but will cause pain in order to further his agenda, which is hypocritical because by destroying one's loved ones, you will cause them pain. With all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. They would all cease to exist. I call that mercy. Determined, non-compromising or rigid, is able to selectively demonstrate empathy. I know what it's like to lose. Feel so desperately that you're right. Yet to fail, nonetheless. You're not the only one cursed with knowledge. You have my respect, Stark. When I'm done, half of humanity will still be alive. I hope they remember you. Is able to feel pain at the loss of a loved one. No signs of clinically significant psychosis, depression, or anxiety. No sign of an intellectual disability. So, watching Infinity War for the third or fourth time now, but this time watching it from a mental health perspective, instead of from the perspective of a general moviegoer in search of escapism, there were three DSM diagnosable disorders that immediately jumped out at me. So, taking a look at the personality disorder section, I've highlighted three disorders for consideration. The first one, schizoid personality disorder, is one that a number of mental health professionals think Batman meets criteria for. Schizoid personality disorder is a pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of emotional expression. Although looking at it now, at this point in my career, I think I would disagree that Bruce Wayne actually meets criteria for this disorder, though it may depend on which version of Bruce Wayne slash Batman you're talking about. But I'll save that for another video. In regards to Thanos, after considering each criteria very carefully, I think Thanos actually falls short of meeting criteria by one or two qualifiers. Basically, he is an isolating, he can feel attachment, and he does enjoy hobbies like gardening, all of which argue against schizoid personality disorder. The second and third personality disorders I'd like to consider in this video, antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder, both fall under cluster B personality disorders, and they share a number of commonalities. So let's take a look at antisocial personality disorder. And a quick side note, terms like sociopath and psychopath fall under antisocial personality disorder. I cover this in a little more depth in my Nightcrawler video, so check that out on my channel if you want more information about sociopathy or psychopathy. Antisocial personality disorder. 
A, a pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others occurring since age 15 as indicated by three or more of the following. A1, failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behaviors as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounds for arrest. Okay, so we don't know much about the cultural customs on Titan, so we don't know if Thanos engaged in behavior that would be considered criminal there. But what we do know is that the idea to wipe out half the planet's population to save resources was viewed as pathological by his culture, so he wasn't allowed to do it. But since he is engaging in these behaviors that were viewed as pathological on his home planet elsewhere in the universe, and this behavior does at least break some laws held by some cultures on some planets, Earth for instance, we can pretty comfortably say that Thanos meets criterion A1. A2, deceitfulness, as indicated by repeated lying, use of aliases, or conning others for personal profit or pleasure. Thanos is clear about his mission from the start and doesn't seem to really lie or use deceitful behavior to further his agenda. So I don't think he meets criterion A2. A3, impulsivity or failure to plan ahead. Thanos is very methodical and strategic. He doesn't really appear to be impulsive. He's been planning this for years and he's carrying it out quite elaborately. So that's a no for criterion A3. A4, irritability and aggressiveness as indicated by repeated physical fights or assaults. Thanos can be restrained at times and can even demonstrate mercy or let adversaries that are obviously detrimental to his plan live. But Thanos can be very aggressive and does frequently engage in fights. But aren't fights common in superhero movies anyway because superheroes need a threat to combat and maybe even some superheroes would meet this criteria since they can be aggressive and fight people a lot too, right? So Thanos meets Criterion A4. A5. Reckless disregard for safety of self or others. Okay, so Thanos' whole mission is to kill half of life. But isn't he doing it because he wants to sustain life into the future and he believes that killing half of life will mean more resources for the rest of the universe so despite whether or not he's right, he believes he is doing something objectively good for the universe and so he's acting with good intentions? So Thanos meets Criterion A5. A6. Consistent irresponsibility as indicated by repeated failure to sustain consistent work behavior or honor financial obligations. Thanos is pretty responsible and he seems to meticulously carry out his plan. So A6 is a no from me fam. A7. Lack of remorse, as indicated by being indifferent to or rationalizing having hurt, mistreated, or stolen from another. Again, Thanos is willing to destroy half of life without regard to those who are lost. But, on the other hand, he does feel legitimate remorse when his loved ones perish. He views his plan as good because he can quickly and humanely destroy half of life once he gains all of the Infinity Stones, which he calls mercy. He thinks that those who die are a worthy sacrifice for the salvation of the universe. But despite the ideology, the practical reality is he does kill those who are currently alive to achieve his ends and causes harm to the loved ones left behind who will mourn their losses. So Thanos meets Criterion A7. B. The individual is at least age 18 years. So Thanos' age is not revealed in Infinity War, but we do see Thanos collecting Gamora from her homeworld when she is still a child, and in Infinity War she's fully matured, so Thanos has to be older than 18. He's probably super old. C. There is evidence of conduct disorder with onset before age 15 years. This is tough because we don't have any information about Thanos' childhood from watching Infinity War, so we don't really know if he meets Criterion C or not. D. The occurrence of antisocial behavior is not exclusive during the course of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Thanos shows no signs of having either of those disorders. Okay, so I think Thanos meets four of the seven criteria under A, so we're good there. He definitely meets B and D. The only uncertainty is C, which we can't determine without more information about his childhood. So we can't say with absolute certainty that Thanos has antisocial personality disorder, but he probably has antisocial personality disorder. Next up, narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder, a pervasive pattern of grandiosity and fantasy or behavior, need for admiration and lack of empathy, beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, as indicated by five or more of the following. One, has a grandiose sense of self-importance. Okay, so Thanos is fawned over by his underlings and refers to himself as the only one with the will to do what he believes is necessary. In this way, he views himself as exceptional. Checkmark. Two, is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. We know that Thanos has been fantasizing about the power of the Infinity Stones and what he could do if he were to obtain them. This power fantasy has driven him to make grand plans to obtain the stones, which he is quite preoccupied with. Checkmark. 
Three, believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. So Thanos definitely believes he's special as pointed out above, but he doesn't claim any association with an exclusive or elite group. So he meets the first part, but not the second part. And looking at the language closely, we see an and as opposed to or, meaning Thanos needs to meet both parts of the sentence in order to get a check mark. So that's a no. Four, requires excessive admiration. We don't know that Thanos requires it, but he certainly gets it from his underlings. Thanos actually seems to focus on his objective and function well either way. Even though most of the universe disagrees with him, in the face of opposition or criticism, Thanos is undeterred. So that's a no. Five, has a sense of entitlement. Thanos thinks that he alone is called to carry out this destiny. And everyone who opposes him is misguided. Punishable by death. Check mark. Six, is interpersonally exploitative. This dude killed his own daughter to get the Soul Stone. I always hated that chair. Even so, I'd hope you'd sit in it one day. Check mark. Seven, lacks empathy, is unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. I already covered this under antisocial personality disorder and it's sprinkled throughout other criteria, but ultimately Thanos does lack empathy for those he harms or kills, unless it's someone he directly loves like Gamora. Check mark. Eight, is often envious of others or believes that others are envious of him or her. We don't really see envy in Thanos' presentation. He's not really jealous of anyone, and he isn't preoccupied with the idea that maybe someone is jealous of him. He doesn't seem to really care about that, so that's a no. Nine, shows arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. Thanos demonstrates this behavior multiple times throughout the film, again going back to the idea that he's absolutely right and everyone who has a different ideology from his is absolutely wrong. Thanos loves the false dichotomy fallacy. Check. So Thanos, in my opinion, meets six of the nine criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. Unlike antisocial personality disorder, we don't need childhood information to go ahead with this diagnosis. So we can pretty comfortably say that Thanos has narcissistic personality disorder and probably, but we don't know for sure, has antisocial personality disorder as well. Like I said earlier, I only looked at the Thanos from Infinity War. I didn't look at Thanos from the comics, in-game, other Marvel films, or from any other source. And I'm sure that the Thanos presented in other areas would have profound implications on some of the conclusions offered in this video. But again, Thanos isn't a human being, so the DSM doesn't even apply to him. So take this for what it is. Now, I wanted to point out how the protagonists or the good guys speak to Thanos throughout the film. It seems that many of them chronically misunderstand or oversimplify him. I understand my child better than anyone. You could never. Today, I lost more than you can know. Even Gamora is wrong about him. Because you love nothing. No one. He is in anguish. Good. He, he, he mourns. Some of the protagonists get emotionally compromised around Thanos, but Thanos usually keeps his cool and holds firm. He doesn't allow the mischaracterizations that are said about him to become self-fulfilling prophecies. Instead, he usually dismisses these statements in a calm manner. There is a maturity about Thanos that's interesting. He's so dedicated to his cause, a cause that he has reached with some degree of reason, that he is not hysterical or upset when presented with conflicting points of view. And there is some personal experience in Thanos' history, such as the destruction of Titan, that show you how he could have reached such a conclusion about the universe and how he truly believes that what he's doing is a noble good thing for the overall survival of life throughout the universe. Ultimately, the story of Infinity War is the tragedy of Thanos. We don't get any indication that Thanos was born bad. He's the result of his environment and his circumstances. He believes that if his peers had listened to his plan, that Titan would have flourished. He gives examples of other planets where he's carried out his plan and how those who live there now enjoy a very high quality of life. Do you know what's happened since then? The children born have known nothing but full bellies and clear skies. It's a paradise. So he does have some evidence for his belief system, even if he kind of cherry picks the results or ignores multiple other factors. Infinity War, to me, is one of the best superhero films ever made. My personal favorite is still Logan, and I really respect Unbreakable as a superhero origin story, but Infinity War just does so many things very well that it's hard to ignore. Its long runtime feels much shorter than it actually is. They manage to perfectly balance all of these different characters and tonal shifts throughout the film, which seems impossible. And the fight on Titan is probably the most satisfying superhero fight I've ever seen. It's got some issues like all films do, but overall I think it's fantastic. 
And yes, I'm one of those who actually thinks Infinity War is a tighter movie than Endgame, despite Endgame's higher rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh yeah, while I was making this video, I actually discovered a typo in the DSM-5 under the Personality Disorder section. Okay, that does it for this episode. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel for future episodes. Let me know in the comments below if there are other movie or TV show characters that you would like me to analyze and potentially diagnose. And I'll see you next time on Psychosynology.